So measuring muscle and bone is critical to understanding bone health and muscle mass. We have some measurements for bone and a pretty clear understanding of what those measurements mean. But what about muscle? When was the last time you had your muscle mass tested? For most of you, probably never. In this video, I'm gonna discuss why muscle testing is important, muscle mass testing, why it probably isn't done, and how to do it, potentially even at home. I'm gonna show you how this is also considered to be an alternative test for bone health and can even tell you about grip strength. So why don't we measure muscle mass like we do bone mass? Well, I'm gonna sound a little bit like a skeptic here, but I think it's because there's no drug to prescribe if it's low. So if you think about DEXA, you know, everybody knows about DEXA now. It was created in 1994. So if you go back almost 30 years, before DEXA, osteoporosis existed. We knew that there was low bone density and people were at higher fracture risk. We had no way to measure it. So DEXA was created, technology existed, but DEXA was accepted in 1994 in the T-score of negative 2.5 was used as the defining criteria for osteoporosis by the World Health Organization. And then following that, in 1995, the FDA approved Fosamax. That is not coincidental. If there were not a drug in the pipeline, there likely wouldn't have been a screening tool, in my opinion, because there would have been no reason to screen. There was nothing to do about it. I'm not saying that this is wrong. I'm not saying that that was malevolent. I'm just saying that the screening tool was created because there was a treatment that could be used and we needed the criteria in which to use the drug. That's just how the system's built. The system is good at doing that, and, and under certain circumstances, that's a really good thing. I just don't think it's the best thing for bone health. So my question is, would we see the same type of testing and prescribing if we had a drug for muscle mass? Maybe. We won't know, because the current best standard treatment for muscle mass increasing is exercise and diet, and doctors can't prescribe that, and most don't know or have enough time to talk about it even if they wanted to. So ultimately, we really don't test muscle mass in the conventional medical model. So we can't really blame doctors for this though, because one of the axioms in medical uh, training is we don't test something that won't change your treatment. Meaning like don't order tests that you don't need, don't order tests where the results won't change what you do. But as we create a new healthcare system, in a new marketplace, we will use tools like exercise and nutrition to help to deliver care. We have to, to prevent chronic disease. These are going to be primary tools. So now, in this new way of looking at healthcare, we need a way to test muscle. So how do we do it? Well, there's two widely available tools. So one is DEXA, which a lot of you are getting anyway, but unfortunately, most places that use DEXA for body composition aren't also using DEXA for bone density and vice versa. So generally, you can either get a body comp DEXA or a bone density DEXA. You're not going to get all the information you need of both from one scan, which is really unfortunate because they have all the data they need. That's just how it's set up. But the other one is called bioelectric impedance. So bioelectric impedance is this technology where essentially very low voltage currents are run through the body and the quote unquote resistance met by the body uh, or from the body can be interpreted to identify certain body comp values. And there's lots of devices out there. So from a direct to consumer perspective, with things, Garmin, in body, from a, a commercial perspective, like something you would see in a doctor's office, products like Tanita and InBody also uh, produces some commercial grade products. Now, the difference between, say, a commercial grade product like you would see with Tanita and InBody versus a home product like you would see it with things is generally going to be accuracy and it's going to be the number of different values that you'll get. So the um, lower cost scales that you stand on are going to measure your entire body as one unit. And the more comprehensive things, the more comprehensive um, scales are going to do it in segmental sections. So arms individually, torso individually, legs individually. So what I'm going to highlight today is the company InBody. I'm going to talk about InBody because they're probably the most popular commercial brand. Um, they were founded in 1996. They've been around for a long time. They have both home and commercial devices, and we have both consumer and practitioner listeners. So InBody kind of fits what everybody might potentially need. So a couple of quick definitions here, because this is really important when you start talking about bioelectric impedance. So let's talk about accuracy versus precision. So when somebody says that something is accurate, it means that it is identifying the thing or it's hitting the thing that we think it's hitting. Like I like to do this uh, through the lens of like shooting a bow and arrow. So if you're shooting a bow and arrow and you hit the center of the target, that is accurate. 
if you shoot five arrows and four go in one of the far corners and one goes in the center of the target, it was still accurate for that one shot, but not for the rest. It was accurate, but it was not precise. Now, precision means that the device can actually achieve the same thing over and over again. So while it might be accurate and precise, meaning that if you were to shoot all five arrows and they were to go into a very small group um, in the center of the target, that would be both accurate and precise. But what if all five arrows were not in the center of the target, but they were outside of the target somewhere, but they were all close together? That's still precise. It's just not accurate. So I look, like to look at these devices, especially the home devices, as precise but not accurate. And I'll give you an example of just my own numbers. So I have a withing scale in my bathroom that I've had for years, and I was able to utilize an in-body device. They sent me their top of the line device, and I was able to utilize this in-body device at home because I wanted to learn more about um, how it functioned, you know, all the things that it could measure. And this one also measures bone density, which I'll talk a little bit more about. But what really stood out to me is that when I stand on these devices, the withing scale says that my body fat is around 20% or maybe 19.5%, which seems pretty high to me. The in-body device says that my body fat is around 6%, which seems pretty low to me. So which one's right? I'm not sure either are correct because I don't think I'm at 19 or at 6% body fat. I'm probably somewhere in the middle. They both seem to be pretty darn precise though. They're just measuring me in different ways. And so it, I'm not as concerned about accuracy as I am about precision because really we don't need to compare ourselves to other people. We just need to compare ourselves to where we were yesterday and where we want to be tomorrow, if that makes sense. Now, the in-body in particular has been studied quite a bit, and it actually is known for its direct measurement of muscle mass, fat mass, body water distribution, and has been repeatedly compared to a standard like DEXA. But like all uh, bioelectric impedance devices, hydration matters, recent food intake can make a difference, recent physical activity. There's actually been some research that suggested that the in-body uh, may underestimate body fat, kind of like it does in me, uh, like in adults, uh, may overestimate it in children. But again, remember that precision is more important than accuracy, as long as that's what we're looking for is the you know change over time. The nice thing about bioelectric impedance, though, is that it's non-invasive, it's easy to use, you can use it at home, there's no radiation, so there's a lot of potential advantages here. All right, so I'm actually going to review, I'm going to uh, show you my report here, and I'm going to review some of the measurements that I thought were really compelling. But before I get into that, let me just say that if you are still struggling to put together your own bone health journey and the tools that you think that you need, please consider coming to our masterclass. Our masterclass is designed for those who are either new or finding that they are struggling in their bone health journey because we go through some of the common mistakes that we see as people try to navigate all this information that's on the internet. And we can help to redirect you on your path. We also spend about 20 minutes answering questions, which a lot of times, uh, you know, many people are going to have the same questions. So you might get some questions answered there as well. If you're interested in that, look in the description on YouTube and you can find the link there or you can go to our website at osteocollective.com. So I discussed the InBody with my team and they wanted me to test it out for myself. So like I said, InBody sent me their um, uh, Model 720 and the 720 is their top of the line commercial device. And so I've got some pictures uh, of this device here. And what was interesting about me on this device is I already mentioned the, the low body fat, but I really was interested in the bone health thing. So there is a bone measure. So I've got my report in front of me. And one of the things that it says here is that my bone mineral content is 10.25 pounds. And then there's a range over here on the right side. And it's between about 7.14, 8.73. Now, I tested myself several times under different circumstances. And it was always pretty consistent. So 10.25, 10.65, 10.6. So, you know, 10.65, 10.6. So it was relatively precise. But my question is, was it accurate? And what's interesting is, and I've shared this before, which is that I have low bone mass. I have low bone density. Uh, I have subtle osteopenia. It's been getting better because I practice what I preach. Um, but 
my DEXA is lower than you would expect it. I'm over a standard deviation below average. And yet on this report, my bone mineral content as it's measured is above the reference range. So what does that mean? Well, I asked the company this question and what they got back to me with is these two studies that I'm going to talk about. Um, but ultimately, you know, they asked the engineers and the engineers basically said, we just don't have enough data to know. But before I talk about how we are going to potentially use these types of devices, let's just run through these studies real quickly. So there, again, there's two studies. One was showing a high correlation in children specifically to muscle mass and fat mass with DEXA, meaning it was very similar to DEXA. So that's great. The second one discusses the algorithm of bone and suggests that this device could be used for screening. That's, I think, a pretty bold statement because we already have screening tools. It would be nice to have more tools. I'd love to look at it in a different way. But again, when I talked to the InBody team, they couldn't really tell me much about the reference range. And my numbers clearly look elevated, but I don't have high bone mass or high bone content. So what do we do with this? Is it good for anything at all? Well, if it's precise, and it does change with DEXA, which I don't think we know that yet, but if it does, then it could be something that you could use to monitor over time. But only this top of the line device currently actually measures bone, so you're unlikely to have this at home. Now, I think the real value though is that it does measure muscle mass, and ultimately we also need to measure muscle mass, right? So I have encouraged my patients to start looking at body composition because we need to know, are we gaining, you know, if we're gaining weight, are we gaining fat? Are we gaining muscle? I think that this, the muscle mass question is as important as the bone mass, bone quality, bone density. Um, and we really need to be measuring both. Now, the other thing that was really cool, and I've got a picture of it here, is that this device also comes with a grip strength measurement tool. And this is a measurement tool that actually connects to the, the main device. Um, and you can you know squeeze on this thing and you can see that you can monitor your grip strength over time. Now, we know that grip strength and VO2 max are probably the two strongest indicators of longevity and health span. And so if you have a way to measure grip strength, that'd be great. So there are other devices out there, but this is a cool one that could potentially link with uh, a bioelectric impedance body comp scale. So overall, I think these devices can be really helpful. I do want to start measuring muscle mass more in my patients. I wish that it could measure bone uh, density or bone mineral content, some way that we could extrapolate it, but I just don't think it's ready for prime time like that. So I wouldn't go out of your way to learn about your bone content through these devices. I've actually seen this on some of the direct-to-consumer devices too, where they talk about bone content. I think my Withings even says something about it, but I don't think that we can actually relate it to anything. And I'm not sure that the changes on those scales are going to be relevant clinically anyway. So I think we should use this thing for muscle mass, for weight if in body composition. If you're struggling with weight, I think it's valuable there. But ultimately, I'm looking at muscle mass in my patients that have sarcopenia and osteoporosis. So if you're interested in one of these devices, we actually have a couple of web pages set up where you can take a look at these devices and find one that might be either right for you at home or potentially as a practitioner, you can uh, drop in and check out these devices and see if they're right for you. That's it. Remember that a diagnosis of osteoporosis isn't the end, but deciding to reverse it is a beginning. I'll see you in the next video.